Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. This plant stands as a prominent leader in the steel sector. It specializes in producing forgings for various industries including energy, such as petrochemical, wind, and nuclear, naval, aeronautical, steel, and mechanical sectors. This workshop's forte lies in the art of forging, where specialized shapes are meticulously crafted. Utilizing open die forging presses capable of exerting up to 38 meganewtons of force, coupled with preheating furnaces, they can manufacture forgings weighing up to 35 tons, with dimensions spanning up to 2.5 by 2.5 by 14 meters. Ensuring superior quality, the facilities equip periodically calibrated furnaces and a quenching tank for precise temperature control during special treatments. This shop employ cutting-edge technologies to monitor temperatures and holding times diligently, enabling them to offer a comprehensive range of heat treatments, including oil or polymer quenching, vertical heat treatments, and surface heat treatments like induction hardening, case hardening, and nitriding. In the machining shop, equipped with horizontal and vertical lathes, milling machines, and machining centers, we achieve maximum precision. Whether it's pre-machining or final finishing, the machinery can handle forgings with tolerances as fine as a few microns. Additionally, the shop provide comprehensive 3D measuring reports using their own coordinate measuring machine, CMM, ensuring impeccable accuracy throughout the process. Producing steel plates from steel slabs involves several stages of processing. Initially, large steel slabs are heated to a high temperature in a furnace, making them malleable for shaping. The softened slabs are then passed through a series of rolling mills, where they undergo hot rolling. During this process, the slabs are gradually thinned and elongated into long sheets using a combination of pressure and heat. After hot rolling, the sheets are cooled and then further processed through a cold rolling mill to refine the thickness and improve the surface finish. Additional treatments such as annealing may be applied to enhance the steel's properties further. Finally. The sheets are cut into specific dimensions to produce steel plates suitable for various applications. Wheel manufacturing at here employs state-of-the-art technology and modern processes to produce wheels that meet the stringent requirements of organizations like Eater2, JATMA, TRA, and EUWA. At the heart of manufacturing process are precise machines meticulously calibrated to prepare steel to the exact dimensions required for wheel production. This ensures consistency and accuracy throughout the manufacturing process. One of key strengths lies in its modern production facilities, which are designed in line with global standards. These facilities incorporate advanced methods of surface preparation for the painting process, ensuring optimal adhesion and durability of the paint finish. The plant has developed innovative rim profiling technology, allowing them to achieve rim widths of up to 36 inches from a single sheet of metal. This unique technology sets plant apart in the industry and offers customers greater flexibility in wheel customization. The company also boasts the capability to produce rims from metal thicknesses of up to 10 millimeters, thanks to their full automated rim welding equipment. Utilizing plasma joined edges, it guarantees high quality welds that meet the most stringent quality standards. Rim manufacturing at here is carried out through an automated rim profiling line, designed and built in-house. Continuous modernization and expansion of production tooling ensure efficiency and scalability to meet growing demands.
The plant takes pride in its ability to implement and manufacture wheels according to individual customer projects. With the world's largest range of wheels produced in one factory, it offers diameters ranging from 12 inches to an impressive 54 inches, catering to diverse customer needs. The production capacity of this wheel manufacturing facility reaches up to 1 million wheels per year, showcasing the company's commitment to scalability and meeting market demands. In terms of rim width, it can produce a comprehensive range from 4.25 inches to 36 inches in the most popular profiles. The initial shaping of the discs is achieved through C plasma cutting, ensuring precision and efficiency in raw material utilization. Forming presses with maximum tonnage capacities of up to 2,500 tons enable the plant to produce discs of up to 20 mm thick. Forming dies and components are designed and manufactured in-house, allowing for customization and quality control at every stage of production. The manufacturing process includes finish turning to achieve better tolerances and precise fitting of components. Computer-assisted runoff tests with complete data collection ensure the quality and integrity of each wheel produced. Welding of discs to the rim is performed using automatic welding machines, with X-ray examination conducted to verify the quality of welds. This meticulous quality assurance process guarantees the reliability and durability of wheels. The painting process takes place in a fully automated and environment-friendly paint shop, where 100% of wheels undergo cataphoresis painting for superior corrode resistance. Painting lots are equipped with automatic systems for color application, ensuring consistency and quality in every finish.
Customers have the option to choose from a wide range of RAL colors as well as special colors, further enhancing customization possibilities. Regular tests in salt mist chambers confirm the excellent corrosion resistance of wheels, exceeding existing standards. Finally, the modern warehouse facilities ensure efficient storage and distribution of wheels, completing the end-to-end -end manufacturing process with excellence and professionalism. The open die hammer forge is a crucial tool in the manufacturing industry particularly in the forging process, which involves shaping metal by applying compressive force. Unlike closed die forging, where the metal is completely confined within dies, open die forging allows for greater flexibility and is ideal for producing larger, more complex metal components. The operation of an open die hammer forge involves several key components and stages. Firstly, the process begins with a heated metal billet placed on the anvil of the forge. This billet is typically preheated to a temperature that makes it more malleable, reducing the force required for deformation. Next, a hammer, either mechanical or hydraulic, is raised above the billet, ready to deliver a powerful downward blow. When released, the hammer strikes the metal with tremendous force, deforming it and causing it to spread laterally. This action is repeated multiple times, with the billet being rotated and repositioned as necessary to achieve the desired shape. Throughout the forging process, skilled operators closely monitor the temperature of the metal, the force exerted by the hammer, and the alignment of the dies to ensure precision and quality in the finished product. The open die forging process offers several advantages, including the ability to produce large, custom-shaped components with minimal material waste and excellent mechanical properties. However, it requires skilled craftsmanship and careful attention to detail to achieve optimal results. The video shows the process of manufacturing pistons by MS Motor Service International GmbH. The raw materials used in the process are primarily aluminum alloys. The piston mold is made from sand, which is packed around a pattern of the piston. Molten aluminum is then poured into the mold and allowed to cool and solidify. Machining. The piston is then machined to achieve the desired dimensions and surface finish. This involves cutting and shaping the piston using specialized tools such as lathes, drills, and grinders. The 100% accurate X-ray inspection is an important quality control step used in the manufacturing of pistons to ensure that the piston cooling channels are free of defects and meet the required specifications. The production lines are flexible, allowing for pistons with a diameter of 65 to 135 millimeters to be manufactured. Surface treatment. The piston is subjected to various surface treatments to improve its durability and resistance to wear and tear. The surface treatment process includes using nanofrix, a coating technology that enhances the surface quality and reduces friction. This surface treatment ensures that the piston is more durable and has a longer lifespan. Quality control. The pistons undergo rigorous quality control measures throughout the manufacturing process, including dimensional checks, hardness testing, and visual inspections. This is an overview of the socket set factory in China. 
it produces a range of socket sets with various options such as metric or say sockets, made from carton steel or CRV, and including ratchet wrenches, screwdrivers, and more. Socket sets are a collection of sockets, ratchets, and other tools used to tighten or loosen bolts and nuts by applying torque to them. Sockets come in a variety of sizes and shapes to accommodate different types of fasteners. To make the task of fastening more convenient, sockets are often packaged together in a set along with a driver tool, such as a manual wrench or pneumatic impact wrench. This collection of tools is called a socket set. Socket sets can vary in the sizes and shapes of sockets they include, with each set designed to meet specific fastening needs. Additionally, some socket sets may include other accessories like extensions or adapters to provide greater versatility in use. Estwing is a family-owned company that has been manufacturing high-quality hand tools in America for over 90 years. The company's manufacturing facility is located in Rockford, Illinois, and the company takes pride in designing and producing the world's most durable, comfortable, and attractive striking and struck tools. In this video, we will focus on the manufacturing process of Estwing hand tools. The first step in the manufacturing process is forging. Estwing's hand tools are fully forged, meaning they are formed from a single piece of steel. The forging process involves heating the steel to a high temperature and then hammering it into the desired shape. This process gives Estwing's hand tools their strength and durability. After the forging process, the hand tools are heat treated to harden the steel. This step ensures that the tools can withstand the wear and tear of heavy use. After the heat treatment process, the forged steel hand tools are ground to create a smooth and uniform surface. Grinding is a process of removing small amounts of material from the surface of the tool using abrasive wheels or belts. This process helps to refine the shape of the tool and create the desired surface finish. Once the grinding process is complete, the tools are then polished to further refine the surface and create a smooth finish. Next, the hand tools are fitted with Estwing's patented shock reduction grip. This grip provides customers with the best available grip for reducing vibrations caused by impact, and it offers the utmost in both comfort and durability. All of the company's nylon vinyl grip tools are now being made with this new material. Finally, the hand tools are tested for hardness and strength to ensure that they meet Estwing's high standards of quality. Every tool is carefully inspected to make sure it meets the company's exacting specifications. The production of OSCA machinists' hammers is a fine example of precision engineering and craftsmanship. The manufacturing process begins with the selection of high-quality materials, including electro-inductive hardened steel C45 for the head and a patented three-component handle. Once the steel has been electro-inductively hardened, it is forged into the shape of a hammerhead. Forging involves heating the steel to a high temperature and then shaping it using a series of dies and hammers. This process helps to create a strong uniform grain structure in the steel, which further enhances its durability and wear resistance. After the hammerhead has been forged, it is subjected to a series of grinding and smoothing processes to create a smooth, uniform surface. The hammerhead is then lacquered to protect it from rust and corrosion. The striking faces and blunted edges of the hammerhead are polished to a mirror-like finish using a series of grinding and polishing wheels. This creates a smooth, flat surface that is ideal for striking metal surfaces without leaving marks or dents. In the production of OSCA machinists' hammers, robots are used in the manufacturing process to ensure precision and consistency. The robots are programmed to perform a series of tasks, such as forging, grinding, smoothing, and polishing, with a high degree of accuracy and efficiency. This helps to ensure that each hammer produced is of the same high quality and meets the strict standards set by the company. The patented three-component handle is made of a nylon outer layer, an anti-slip rubber grip, and an aluminum alloy core. This unique design helps to reduce vibration and makes it easier to grip and hold the hammer during use. The handle is also designed to be comfortable to hold, reducing the risk of hand fatigue during prolonged use. The head of the hammer is mechanically fixed to the handle using a steel wedge and red epoxy resin. 
This ensures that the head is securely attached to the handle, reducing the risk of the head coming loose during use. Once the hammers are manufactured, they are subjected to rigorous quality control procedures to ensure that they meet the high standards set by the company. This includes testing the hammers for durability, safety, and reliability. Shearing. The first step in the manufacturing process is shearing. In this step, raw material in the form of steel bars is cut into specific lengths required for the production of combination wrenches. This process is carried out with the help of a shearing machine. Shot blasting. The next step is shot blasting. In this step, the cut steel bars are cleaned and prepared for forging by blasting them with abrasive materials such as steel shots or grits. Forging. The third step is forging. In this step, the prepared steel bars are heated in a furnace to a specific temperature and then shaped into the desired form using a forging press. The forging process compresses the steel, making it stronger and more durable. The steel bars are heated to 1250 degrees centigrade to prepare them for the hot rolling process. Hot rolling. In this step, the heated wrench blanks are fed through a series of rollers that reduce their thickness to the required dimensions. The hot rolling process involves feeding the heated metal strip or sheet into a set of rollers that apply pressure to reduce its thickness. The temperature and pressure of the rollers are carefully controlled to ensure the metal is not overworked or damaged during the process. The hot rolling process can be repeated multiple times to achieve the desired thickness and mechanical properties. Cooling. The forged wrench blanks are then cooled to room temperature to prevent any warping or distortion caused by the high temperatures used in the earlier steps. Blanking. In this step, the cooled wrench blanks are cut into individual wrenches with the help of a blanking press. Sandblasting. After blanking, the individual wrenches are cleaned and prepared for further processing by sandblasting. This step removes any remaining rust, dirt, or other impurities present on the wrenches. Grinding is a critical process for achieving the precise dimensions and smooth surface finish required for the wrenches. After the wrenches are blanked, they are sent through a grinding machine that removes any rough edges and surfaces. The grinding process is automated and controlled by computer programs to ensure consistency in the finished product. Tumbling. In this step, the sandblasted wrenches are placed in a tumbler with abrasive media such as ceramic chips or steel pins. Tumbling smooths and polishes the surface of the wrenches, removing any sharp edges or burrs and improving their appearance. Coining. The next step is coining. In this step, the combination wrenches are pressed into a die to create the final shape and surface texture. Coining further improves the strength and durability of the wrenches by increasing their density. Drilling. In this step, the combination wrenches are drilled with the appropriate size holes to accommodate bolts and nuts of various sizes. Broaching. After drilling, the combination wrenches are broached to create the characteristic square openings required for fitting onto bolts and nuts.
tumbling. The combination wrenches are once again placed in a tumbler to remove any remaining burrs or rough edges caused by the broaching process. After that, the wrenches are sent through a heat treatment process. Heat treatment involves subjecting the wrenches to extreme temperatures to alter their physical and mechanical properties. In the case of Beta Tools combination wrenches, the heat treatment process involves hardening and tempering the wrenches to increase their durability and strength. The heat treatment process begins with heating the wrenches to a temperature of around 860 degrees Celsius, at which point the steel undergoes a transformation called austenitization. The wrenches are then quenched in a bath of oil or water to rapidly cool them and transform the austenite into martensite, a hard, crystalline structure. After quenching, the wrenches are tempered by reheating them to a temperature of around 560 degrees Celsius. The tempering process allows the martensite to transform into tempered martensite, which is stronger and more ductile than the untempered martensite. Polishing. In this step, the combination wrenches are polished to give them a final glossy appearance. Nickel Chrome Plating. The final step in the manufacturing process is nickel chrome plating. In this step, the combination wrenches are electroplated with a layer of nickel and then a layer of chrome to provide a durable and corrosion-resistant surface finish. Checking and inspection play a crucial role in the Beta Tools combination wrench manufacturing process. Quality control measures are taken at every step of the process to ensure that the final product meets the required specifications and standards. Various inspection and testing techniques are employed to detect any defects, inconsistencies or faults in the raw materials, components, and finished products. These techniques may include visual inspection, dimensional inspection, non-destructive testing NDT, and functional testing. Spin testing a large steel R2 gearbox replacement built by Horsberg and Scott. Huge R2 steel mill gearbox was built to replace a 30-year-old unit and improve with modern gearing technology. Wire rod production is a complex process that involves various stages, from raw material acquisition to the production of finished wire products. We're in Patini Group's mill where covers the entire production cycle with a focus on quality and reliability. The process begins with the collection of scrap metal, which serves as the primary raw material for wire rod production. This scrap is then taken to the electric arc furnace, EAF, furnace, where it undergoes melting to form molten steel. The EAF furnace is a crucial component in the production process, as it allows for the efficient melting of scrap metal to produce high-quality steel. Once the steel has been melted, it is transferred to the ladle furnace, LF, where any impurities are removed, and the chemical composition of the steel is adjusted to meet the desired specifications. This step is essential for ensuring the quality and consistency of the final product. After refining in the LF furnace, the molten steel is transferred to the continuous casting machine, where it is solidified into billets. These billets serve as the starting material for wire rod production and are formed with precision to ensure uniformity and quality. The billets are then fed into the hot rolling mill, where they are heated to high temperatures and passed through a series of rollers to reduce their thickness and increase their length. This process results in the formation of wire rods, which can be either smooth or ribbed depending on the desired end use. 
For smooth wire rods, the production process may end here, with the wire rods being coiled and prepared for further processing or shipment to customers. However, for ribbed wire rods, an additional step of cold rolling is required. In this step, the wire rods are passed through a cold rolling mill to impart a ribbed texture, which enhances their mechanical properties and makes them suitable for reinforcement applications. After cold rolling, the ribbed wire rods may undergo further processing such as wire drawing, stretching, or cold rolling to produce a variety of wire products, including welding wires, meshes, lattice girders, and coils. Each of these products serves specific applications in industries such as construction, mechanical engineering, and welding. The steel ball skew rolling machine is a sophisticated piece of equipment designed for the precise fabrication of grinding steel balls. Here's a more detailed explanation of how it works. Material selection and preparation. The machine is capable of handling various materials, including medium carbon steel, alloy steel, and others. These materials are carefully selected based on the specific requirements of the application. Before processing, the raw materials undergo preparation, which may include cutting or shaping to the desired size and form. Conveyor system. The machine is equipped with a conveyor system that facilitates the movement of materials throughout the production process. This conveyor system ensures smooth and continuous flow, enabling efficient handling of materials from one stage to another. Heating Furnace A crucial component of the machine is the heating furnace. This furnace is used to heat the raw materials to the appropriate temperature before the skew rolling process. Heating is essential for enhancing the plasticity of the material, making it easier to deform during the rolling process. Skew rolling process. The skew rolling process involves shaping cylindrical materials into spherical shapes through controlled deformation. This process is achieved by passing the heated material through specially designed rollers that exert pressure from different angles. As the material passes through the rollers, it undergoes plastic deformation, gradually transforming into spherical shapes. The grind ball manufacturing process in Turkey employs a pneumatic hammer, which offers ease of operation through simple controls. Operators can manipulate a hand lever or foot pedal to execute various functions seamlessly. These functions include idle run, top setting, pressing down, single blow, or a series of light or full blows, depending on the desired outcome. The pneumatic hammer utilizes compressed air to drive the striking mechanism, delivering controlled force to shape all materials into grinding balls. This process ensures efficiency and precision in the manufacturing of grind balls, meeting the quality standards required for various industrial applications. Quality control. Throughout the skew rolling process, quality control measures are implemented to ensure the production of high-quality grinding steel balls. This may involve monitoring parameters such as temperature, pressure, and dimensions to meet the desired specifications. Final inspection and packaging. Once the skew rolling process is complete, the finished grinding steel balls undergo a final inspection to ensure they meet the required standards. After inspection, the balls are packaged and prepared for distribution to various industries. These grinding steel balls are extensive applicated across diverse industries such as mining, gold extraction, copper refining, and iron ore processing. Additionally, it caters to sectors like aluminum production, non-ferrous metal extraction, metallurgy, cement manufacturing, thermal power generation, flue gas desulfurization, and more. Here is ILSAM's plant. It specializes in manufacturing steel parts tailored for a diverse range of industries, including tractors, earth-moving machinery, industrial vehicles, 
agricultural equipment, engines, motorcycles, hydraulic cylinders, and railway systems. The production process adheres to stringent quality controls, ensuring excellence from raw material acceptance to the final dimensional and structural assessment, facilitated by cutting-edge machinery. Steel deformation is meticulously executed using powerful double-acting hammers capable of exerting pressures up to 3,000 tons, along with screw and connecting rod presses reaching 2,000 tons. Moreover, the facility conducts mechanical processing and heat treatments to optimize the properties of the parts. Integral to Plants' operations is its involvement in both the design and construction of molds. This phase harmonizes advanced technologies with human expertise to deliver comprehensive technical support and molding assistance. Each stage, from CAD, CAM design utilizing state-of-the-art software to processing employing numerically controlled centers, automatic lathes, copy machines, planers, and vertical cutters, is meticulously overseen by highly skilled personnel. This holistic approach ensures that every aspect of production is meticulously executed to meet the exacting standards of quality and precision demanded by their clientele. Drop forging is a metalworking process used to shape metal parts by pressing heated metal billets between two dies to achieve the desired shape. This section shows the 150 kg drop forged part used in the chassis of a freight railway wagon. The process involves several steps and specialized equipment. Firstly, the raw material, which in this case is structural steel, is heated to a forging temperature of approximately 1050 degrees Celsius. This high temperature makes the steel more malleable and easier to shape. The pre-forging stage is carried out using a forging manipulator, specifically a Dango plus Dienenthal manipulator, on a Chambersburg 9,000 pounds hammer. The manipulator is used to position and manipulate the heated steel billet before it is forged. The Chambersburg hammer, pneumatically driven, then delivers controlled blows to shape the steel into a rough form close to the final desired shape. Once the pre-forging is complete, the drop forging process begins. The drop forging is performed using an electro-hydraulic press, specifically a Losco Hu 1250. This press, built in 2003 and weighing approximately 10 tons, exerts immense pressure to further shape the pre-forged part into its final form. The Losco press, with a machine weight of around 250 tons, delivers powerful and precise strikes to the heated steel billet compressing it between two dies to achieve the exact dimensions and contours required for the railway wagon chassis component. Finally, the deburing stage removes any excess material or imperfections from the forged part. This is done using a hydraulic press from Berkel with a pressing force of 400 tons. The press applies controlled pressure to smooth out the surface of the part, ensuring it meets quality standards and specifications. In the realm of precision forging, where the creation of countless small components with utmost accuracy and efficiency is paramount, the air stamp hammer stands tall as a beacon of innovation. This remarkable piece of machinery redefines the standards of productivity and precision, making it an indispensable investment for industries reliant on the manufacturing of small components in large quantities.
At the heart of the Air Stamp Hammer lies its Die Max series, a testament to its versatility and power. With its substantial striking force, this series empowers the hammer to handle a wide array of products with ease and precision. Whether crafting intricate gears or delicate fittings, the Air Stamp Hammer ensures uniformity and excellence in every strike. One of the defining features of the Air Stamp Hammer is its split-type ram guide. This ingenious design allows for the dismantling of the ram from either side in a vertical direction. Such flexibility not only simplifies maintenance and repairs but also enhances operational efficiency, reducing downtime and maximizing productivity. Safety is paramount in any industrial setting, and the air stamp hammer leaves no room for compromise. The inclusion of a RAM safety catch lock serves as a failsafe mechanism, preventing the RAM from accidentally dropping in the event of power failure or any unforeseen circumstances. This feature not only safeguards personnel and equipment but also instills confidence in operation, ensuring smooth and worry-free forging processes. Central to the functionality of the air stamp hammer is its utilization of compressed air to pressurize the upper piston head. This innovative approach unleashes a formidable blow energy, driving the forging process with unparalleled force and precision. By harnessing the power of compressed air, the hammer achieves remarkable efficiency and consistency in each stroke, laying the foundation for impeccable craftsmanship. Moreover, the ability to control compressed air enables swift and precise movement of the ram in the vertical direction. This dynamic control mechanism empowers operators to fine-tune the forging process according to specific requirements, ensuring optimal results with every operation. From adjusting the depth of each strike to fine-tuning the forging speed, this level of control elevates the air stamp hammer to a league of its own, setting new standards in precision forging. The air stamp hammer operates on a simple yet ingenious principle. Upon activation, compressed air is channeled to pressurize the upper piston head, generating immense energy. This pressurized air acts as the driving force behind the downward movement of the ram, delivering a powerful strike onto the workpiece below. The controlled release of compressed air facilitates the swift ascent of the ram, preparing it for the next cycle of forging. This seamless process of pressurization, striking, and release ensures a continuous and efficient workflow, allowing for rapid production of high-quality components.
The D51 series vertical type ring rolling machine operates by compressing and shaping metal blanks into various cylindrical shapes such as bearing outer rings, gearing blanks, pipeline flanges, and welding neck flanges. It integrates rolling and forming processes, enhancing production efficiency and precision while minimizing material waste. By reducing turning remnants and improving steel utilization, it optimizes cutting performance and enhances the inner quality of forged components. Widely applied in machinery, automotive, aerospace, and energy industries, this machine delivers substantial economic benefits through its ability to streamline manufacturing processes and enhance the quality of finished products. Heat treating is a critical process in the manufacturing industry, particularly for metal products, where it plays a pivotal role in enhancing their mechanical properties and overall performance. Understanding how heat treating works is essential for ensuring the quality and reliability of the final products. The process of heat treating involves subjecting metal materials to controlled heating and cooling cycles to alter their internal structure and, consequently, their mechanical properties. This process can be tailored to achieve different outcomes, such as increasing hardness, improving strength, enhancing ductility, or introducing corrosion resistance. Let's delve into the key steps involved in heat treating. Heating to a specific temperature. This initial phase aims to achieve uniform heating of metal materials. Controlled heating is essential to prevent uneven expansion, which can result in surface cracks or distortions. The heating rate is determined by factors such as the metal's heat conductivity and its existing condition. Metals with higher conductivity heat up faster, while previously hardened or stressed parts require slower heating. Soaking stage, holding at the set temperature. In this stage, the metal is maintained at the desired temperature to facilitate internal structural changes. The duration of this soaking period is crucial and is determined through chemical analysis and consideration of the metal's mass. In cases of uneven cross sections, the soaking period is based on the largest section to ensure uniformity. Cooling based on prescribed methods. The final step involves cooling the metal to room temperature using various methods depending on the metal type. This may involve employing cooling media such as liquids, solids, gases, or combinations thereof. The cooling rate is tailored to the metal and the medium used, influencing the final properties of the metal part. During the heat treating process, Temperatures can reach as high as 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit, with soaking periods ranging from seconds to over 60 hours. Cryogenic processes, involving treatment at temperatures as low as minus 120 degrees Fahrenheit, are also utilized in some applications. Different metals undergo distinct cooling procedures, including slow furnace cooling or rapid quenching with substances like brine, water, polymers, molten metals, oils, or gases. Each quenching medium offers specific properties suitable for particular applications, though commonly used mediums include oils, gases, water, or polymers. These tailored cooling methods play a vital role in achieving desired material properties for various industrial applications. Stands at the forefront of innovation in metalworking, showcasing its prowess with a complete brass forging line. This integrated system encompasses a series of specialized machinery, each playing a crucial role in transforming raw brass into precisely engineered components. The journey begins with the sawing machine, a precision instrument designed to cut raw brass into manageable pieces. This initial step sets the stage for the subsequent processes by ensuring uniformity and accuracy in the material's dimensions. With the raw material prepared, the brass forging line seamlessly transitions to the graphitizing stage. Graphitizing is a critical step in the forging process, involving the application of graphite coating to the brass surfaces. This coating serves multiple purposes, 
including enhancing lubrication, reducing friction, and preventing oxidation during the subsequent heating stages. Next in line is the hotting furnace, where precision meets intense heat. This specialized furnace utilizes controlled heating cycles to elevate the temperature of the graphitized brass to optimal forging temperatures. The ability to regulate temperature gradients with precision is paramount, as it directly influences the material's formability and mechanical properties. Within the confines of the hotting furnace, brass undergoes a transformation, becoming malleable and ready for shaping. Finally, the brass forging line culminates at the forging press, where raw material is molded into its final form. This powerhouse of machinery exerts immense force, shaping the heated brass with precision and accuracy. Through a combination of pressure and carefully crafted dies, the forging press imparts the desired geometry and structural integrity onto the brass components. Whether producing intricate details or robust shapes, this stage represents the pinnacle of craftsmanship within the FPM Group's forging line. The manufacturing process for hex head anchor bolt involves several steps including shearing, heading, chamfering, threading, hot dip, galvanizing, and finishing. The following is a step-by-step -step guide to the manufacturing process. Shearing. The round bar of steel is an inch and a quarter diameter by 48 inch long, galvanized. It is cut to the required length using a petting house shear. Heading. The hex head is hot forged onto one end of the steel rod using an induction heating coil that heats the end of the rod to around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The national upsetter is then used to forge the heated end of the rod into a hex-shaped head. Gripper blocks clamp the round bar securely in place while a plunger or die compresses the heated end of the rod, reshaping it into the hex head configuration. The manufacturer's logo and grade symbol are then stamped onto the head as required. Chamfering. High-speed cutting blades apply a chamfer to the ends of the bolts prior to threading. This beveled end will help facilitate easy assembly of the nut once the bolts have been threaded and galvanized. Threading. Landis threaders are used to cut 8 inches of thread onto the end of these anchor bolts. Rotating heads contain chasers that cut away steel from the round bar to produce the threads. A constant stream of cutting oil is applied to reduce friction and prevent overheating. Threads are gauged by the threading operators to ensure conformance to dimensional tolerances. Hot dip galvanizing. The bolts must be pickled prior to galvanizing. This process cleans the bolts and prepares the surface of the steel to accept the zinc. The parts are first submerged in caustic soda, which removes cutting oil and other organic materials that accumulate during the manufacturing process. The bolts are then rinsed and submerged in sulfuric acid, which removes any scale from the bolts and etches the surface of the steel. 
the bolts are rinsed again and then submerged in flux, which is a chemical that assists in the bonding of the zinc to the steel. After pickling, bolts are placed in racks and lowered into a 12-foot long by 4-foot wide by 7-foot deep tank of 840-degree molten zinc. The bolts remain in the zinc for between 2 to 4 minutes. When the bolts are removed from the zinc, they are spun in a high-speed centrifuge to remove excess zinc from the threads. Finishing, the bolts are cooled in quench tanks so they can be inspected and packaged as soon as they are removed from the galvanizing tank. Building a custom 16-foot welded aluminum boat is a complex process that involves a lot of planning, skill, and attention to detail. Every aspect of the boat, from its size and shape to the materials used in its construction, must be carefully considered to ensure that the final product meets the client's requirements. The first step in building a custom aluminum boat is to create a detailed design that takes into account the boat's intended use, weight capacity, and other important factors. This design may be created using computer-aided design CAD software, or it may be drawn by hand on paper. Once the design is complete, the fabrication process can begin. This typically involves cutting the various pieces of aluminum that will make up the boat's hull, deck, and other components. These pieces are then welded together using a combination of MIG, metal inert gas, and TIG, tungsten inert gas, welding techniques. One of the most important components of any boat is the transom, which is the vertical surface at the rear of the boat that supports the engine. In the case of a 16-foot welded aluminum boat, the transom is typically made from one-quarter thick aluminum, which provides the necessary strength and durability to support the weight of the engine. The hull bottom of the boat is also a critical component that must be carefully constructed. In a 16-foot welded aluminum boat, the hull bottom is typically made from 3 16 thick aluminum, which provides a strong, durable surface that can withstand the impact of waves and other obstacles in the water. The sides, deck, and console of the boat are typically made from 1 8 thick aluminum, which provides a lightweight yet sturdy surface that is easy to work with and can withstand the elements. When building a welded aluminum boat, there are several important considerations that must be taken into account to ensure that the final product is safe, durable, and effective for its intended use. Here are a few keynotes to keep in mind. Use high-quality materials. Aluminum is an excellent material for boat construction, but not all aluminum is created equal. Be sure to use marine-grade aluminum, such as 5052 or 5083, which is specifically designed for use in harsh marine environments. Ensure proper welding techniques. Welding is a critical part of the boat building process, and it's important to use the proper welding techniques to ensure that the boat is strong and watertight. MIG and TIG welding are two common techniques used in aluminum boat building, and it's important to use a skilled and experienced welder to ensure that the welds are strong and durable. Follow a detailed design plan. Building a boat without a detailed design plan can lead to mistakes, errors, and inconsistencies that can compromise the safety and performance of the boat. Be sure to create a detailed design plan that takes into account all of the necessary components, materials, and specifications for the boat. Choose the right thickness for each component. 
The thickness of the aluminum used for each component of the boat, such as the transom, hull bottom, sides, deck, and console, will depend on the intended use of the boat and the expected conditions it will face. Be sure to choose the right thickness for each component to ensure that the boat is strong and durable. Consider the weight distribution. Proper weight distribution is important for the safety and performance of the boat. Be sure to consider the weight of the engine, fuel tanks, batteries, and other components when designing and building the boat. Test the boat before use. Once the boat is completed, be sure to test it thoroughly before taking it out on the water. This will help identify any issues or problems that need to be addressed before the boat is put into regular use. Once all of the components of the boat have been fabricated and welded together, the boat can be painted or coated with a protective finish to ensure that it remains in good condition for years to come. Finally, the boat is outfitted with any necessary accessories, such as a self-bailing center console, navigation lights, and a Honda 50 horsepower engine that can propel the boat to a top speed of 30 knots. Continuous induction furnaces for bar heating and shearing. The journey of forging begins with the heating of raw material bars, a critical phase that determines the success of subsequent forging operations. Continuous induction furnaces have emerged as the go-to solution for this task. Employing electromagnetic induction principles, these furnaces offer rapid and uniform heating of metal bars, ensuring consistent temperatures across the entire length of the material. This not only accelerates the heating process but also minimizes thermal gradients, reducing material stress and enhancing the overall quality of forged components. Integrated shearing mechanisms further optimize efficiency, allowing for precise cutting of heated bars to desired lengths, thus facilitating seamless transition into the forging stage. Thrust-type gas heating furnaces. As the heated bars progress towards the forging stage, maintaining optimal temperatures becomes paramount. Thrust-type gas heating furnaces provide a robust solution for this purpose. Utilizing controlled combustion processes, these furnaces deliver precise heat distribution, allowing for targeted temperature adjustments as per the requirements of specific forging operations. Advanced thermal insulation technologies minimize heat loss, ensuring energy efficiency while maintaining a stable working environment for forging operations. The versatility of these furnaces enables seamless integration into various forging setups, accommodating diverse material types and forging techniques with ease. Conveyor belt gas heating furnaces. In scenarios where continuous production is paramount, conveyor belt gas heating furnaces offer unparalleled efficiency and throughput. By leveraging conveyor systems, these furnaces enable a seamless flow of heated material through the forging process, eliminating bottlenecks and optimizing production rates. The integration of advanced temperature monitoring and control systems ensures uniform heating across the entire surface area of the material, guaranteeing consistent quality in forged components.
continuous belt gas furnaces for quenching and tempering heat treatments, for applications demanding rapid quenching and tempering of forged components, continuous belt gas furnaces offer a high-throughput solution without compromising on quality. Utilizing conveyor belt systems, these furnaces enable a continuous flow of components through quenching and tempering chambers, minimizing cycle times and maximizing productivity. Advanced cooling mechanisms ensure rapid quenching rates, preventing undesired phase transformations and imparting the desired material properties effectively. Precise temperature control during tempering stages further enhances the durability and performance of forged components, making them ready for the most demanding industrial applications.